Hello there and welcome to the series of videos looking to go through the first year content of Maths A-Level. Here we're looking at negative and fractional indices both on algebra and on numbers. And hopefully after this you'll have a go at exercise 1D. So, uh, a few of the rules that hopefully you'll have met at GCSE to do with negative numbers and fractions on indices. So, uh, a to the power of 1 over m equals the mth root of a. Now let's just write down a few examples of this. So for example, a to the power of a half is equal to the square root of a. a to the power of a third is equal to the cube root of a. And so on and so on and so on. Now when we have here a to the power of n over m, we first do the mth root of a and then we power that value. So for example, if we've got a to the power of two thirds, just like we did before, we do the third bit first, so we'll cube root the a first, and then whatever answer we get to that, we square it, because that's what the numerator is there, and the denominator will pop in there as the root. When we have a negative, um, when we have a negative power, we treat that the same as doing one over a to the power of m, so the reciprocal of a to the power of m. So the root here is going to stay on, so not the root, the power is going to stay on the a here, just the indice, the negative here, is now going to be moved as a 1 over. So for example, a to the power of minus 2 is going to be 1 over because of the negative, and a squared, because we don't drop the 2 at all, the 2 stays on the a, and uh, it's 1 over a squared on the bottom. And another nice little reminder here, anything to the power of 0 is 1. OK, let's work us through a few questions then. So first of all, um, x to the power of minus 3 divided by x, so x to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of minus 3. In this case here, we're going to subtract our indices, which is going to lead us to x cubed divided by x minus 3. So that's going to be x3 take away minus 3. So a double negative will happen here. I'm going to get x to the 6. This, this is a rule from about two videos ago. OK, next one here is that we are timesing indices here. So x to the power of a half times x to the power of 3 over 2. Remember when we times indices, same base value or same base uh, letter, we add the values here. So this is going to give us x squared. OK, x cubed to the power of 3 over 2. So remember, when we're doing a power of another power, then we, uh, multiply, the, um, we multiply the indices. So it's 2 thirds times 3, which will give us x squared. And then a cube root of 125x to the power of 6 here. So we'll treat this separately. So what we'll do is we'll use the cube root and we'll call it a power of a third. And then we'll do the 125 separately to the x uh, to the power of 6 cube rooted. So the cube root of 125 um, is 5. And then we times the indices here, so that's going to be x squared. So 5x squared. OK, so remember with these ones here, when we're trying to simplify the algebra here, that we look to separate them into two separate fractions first. The denominator is going to be the same on both of them, and the numerator is going to be split up. So in this case here, we're going to subtract the uh, base numbers, not the base numbers, subtract the uh, indices, and we'll get 2 over x cubed minus 1 over x4, because when you do 2 take away 5, that's minus 3, so we can write that as over x to the power of 3. And 1 take away 5 will give us 4, the minus 4, sorry. Uh, so we're going to write that as 1 over x to the power of 4. I'll rewrite this as 2x to the power of minus 3 minus x to the power of minus 4. OK, let's, uh, let's look at doing these rules with some values now. So 9 to the power of a half, remember I used that example before. Uh, a to the power of 1 over 2, that's the square root, so that's just going to be 3. 
64 to the power of 1 over 3, so that's going to be the cube root of 64, which is 4. 49 to the power of 3 over 2, so remember the way that we do this. We square root it first and do that on the denominator, and then we uh, raise that to the power of 3 because that is the numerator on the indice. So we square root first and get 7. 7 cubed is 343. Incorporating a lot of the different values here, so 25 to the minus 3 over 2. So we do the minus bit first, and that will give us 1 over 25 to the power of 3 over 2. Then we square root, because that's the denominator on the indice, and we cube that answer, because that's the numerator on the indice. So the square root of 25 is 5, and 5 cubed is 125. Okay, some slightly trickier questions here now. Given that y equals 1 16th of x squared, express y to the power of half in terms of kx to the n, where k and n are constants. So what we want to do here is we're given that y equals 1 over 16 x to the power of a half, x to the power of 2. And what we want to do is this expression here to the power of a half. So y to the power of a half is what we want to find an expression for. So we need to half, uh, so we don't need to half, we need to square root all of this side here. Now the way we square root fractions is you square root the top and square root the bottom. So we get a quarter here. And then on the x squared to the power of a half, we times the indices together. So we're going to get 2 times a half, which is just 1, so it's a quarter x. So in our question here, we're going to get k is the value of a quarter, and n is the power, which is just the value 1. Okay, it's a slightly similar question here, but a lot more difficult. So we've still got that 1 over 16 to the power of x squared. This time I want you to express 4 to the power of 4y to the power of minus 1 in the form y, kx to the power of n, where k and n are constants. Now, just a little note on the side here. When we write 4y to the power of 1, we're only powering 1 by the y. If it looks like this, then we would um, be powering all of this fraction by the power of minus 1. So this term here is going to look like 1 over 4y, but this term here is going to look like 4 over y. I hope the brackets make a difference here, and you can see how that's making a difference. Okay, so what do we have? We have y equals 1 over 16x to the squared. So what we're looking for here is 4y to the power of minus 1. So we're looking for 4 times this 1 over 16x squared to the power of minus 1. So we'll split up the powers and do the power of minus 1 onto this individually. So six, 1 over 16 to the power of minus 1, that's going to effectively be the reverse of this process here. So it's already a 1 over, so now it's just going to become 16. And then we're going to times the indices on this 2 and minus 1 here. So what we're going to get is... 4x to the 6... 4, 16... 4 times 16, x to the minus 2, and we'll simplify that to get 64x to the minus 2. So in this case here, k is 64, and n is minus 2. Okay, so you can always split up your indices into different components, or different, um, or different components when you're multiplying them. OK, so your turn now. Pause the video and have a go at these four questions. OK, well done for having a go at these questions here. The first one here is x squared times by, sorry, x squared to the power of 3 over 2. And the way that we do that is we times the indices here. So it's just going to be x to the power of 2 times 3 over 2. And in this case here, it's going to be x cubed. OK, this term here, so what we're going to do is we're going to divide our numbers. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. And then we're going to subtract 2 thirds 
and 1 sixteenth. So this is going to be 4 sixths take away 1 sixth. That's going to be 3 sixths, which is going to be simplified to a half. So 3x to the power of a half. Simplify y to the power of minus 1 over 2. So the first thing I would do here is do 1 over 9 to the power of a half. And 9 to the power of a half, the square root of 9 is 1 over 3. OK, on these fractions ones here now, remember the way that we simplify these is that we simplify into different components, the numerator, and on each of these we have the same denominator. So simplifying this, we're going to get 5 divided by an invisible 1, so that's 5, and then cu x cubed divided by x to the power of 5, that's going to be over x squared. Take away 2 divided by 1, so that's 2, and this is going to be over x cubed, because 2 take away 5 is minus 3, so it's going to be x to the minus x to the 3, or on the bottom, and x to the minus 3 if it were on the top. So that we could write this expression as 5x to the minus 2, take away 2x to the minus 3. Both of these ways of writing the answer here would be acceptable. Okay, so once you've finished the video, then have a go again at exercise 1D and have lots of practice at this. If you're struggling on this, it's better to get in some practice now before we get too deep into the rearranging of indices when we get to the likes of differentiation. So have lots of practice now and make sure that you can do these sorts of questions um, quite easily and really within your sleep. Okay, thanks for watching.